we're trying to get other films also made because we've just realized that it includes a lot of young people. Just from this film alone, we had about 80 to 100 um, Tanzanian actors and uh, production designers and lighting and camera people. So we're hoping to do even bigger films in the future and try to export Tanzanian culture even more. Um, we screened the film in London where diaspora audience from all over Africa came out and supported the film. So now I want to bring back to Tanzanians today here in Birmingham and I want you all to be part of the history as we move forward. Tanzaniawe? Um, so we're going to play a scene and a trailer from the film. I mean, I've been trapped in hospitals for almost 10 years with no days off, no sunlight. We need a doctor to volunteer. They need you to volunteer for the auction. You need to get into it. This is how you move your way up. Dr. Berger has generously donated one money to help a facility in desperate need. It is sold! <laughs> it's Africa. I can do this. Don't be silly, you're gonna be great! This is what I'm expecting me. I'm a doctor. Doctor, how come? Don't lie. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. I'm a baby. This is insanity. Why is this not working? There's no power. What about his wheelchair? He doesn't have his own, he can't afford it. Listen, there's a bus leaving for a rush in the morning. Go on a safari, you need to see the beauty of this country. It's just too many problems. And you can't solve them all, but you can change one problem at a time. <laughs> Take two each day. To the best American doctor. <laughs> you are the best because you try. It's chaotic, but it's simpler. You're just you and the patient. And of course, someone comply, someone trust you, someone will break your heart, someone will teach you. basically is that we have our negatives but we have our positives. Otherwise what's usually shown is just the negatives, people killing each other and somebody comes and saves the day. What we're trying to show is that we do have negatives and we do have power problems. We also have human relationships. So we're trying to that was the only positive Yeah that, that's 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 yeah human relationships we have the weather we have the, you know the the scenery we have better treatment our doctors can take time with the patients and talk to them as a human being. Well, I don't know if you, I don't know about here, but in America, it's like everything's like, come in, come go out, take these pills, go. So it's like, to, t to, tell, to tilt the story towards Africa, you need to say negativity and say positivity. Otherwise, it becomes a like commercial about Africa. And then somebody who's, if you're trying to sell the story to an international audience, you'll say, well, that's not what I experienced. I got food poisoning and I couldn't, you know, <laughs> like our actress, she, when she arrived, we shot her the first day. We were supposed to shoot some other scenes, but she got food poisoning, so she was sick throughout the whole week. So that's her experience, you know. So if you just show the commercial, that's what commercials are for, to just show the... Prof but the film is not perfect, of course. I mean, it's done independently on a low budget, just press strings. Of course, there are things that could be improved. Mm -hmm. And even me looking back, there are things that could improve ten times better. So what I'm trying to show that's also is that... Rich. Yeah, so I'm trying to show that it's not even about slums, it's just about what you want out of life. He could have stayed in LA and stayed in Beverly Hills with his girlfriend and stuff like that. But when he went to, to Africa, he actually realized that he actually wants to be a doctor. He wants to take care of the people and not just be like a high paid doctor in Beverly Hills. But it's also about just the perspective of happiness. So now it's like it's eye opening that we actually can market <coughs> the whole world, which becomes difficult, of course, because it's like, you know, we're not Hollywood. We don't have $100 million to put billboards on buses. Yeah. It was George Clooney was talking about, they were asking him, why are you making cheap films? Why don't you make like $100 million Pirates of the Caribbean? And he said, well, uh, money is money. So I'm making these films that I'm not getting any money in, but I can go to Japan and do a Starbucks commercial for $7 million. You know, because I'm George Clooney, because I made this yeah. film. So I think it's the matter of not looking at maybe DVD sales and looking at film building a billboard for maybe merchandising, product placement, just the wider world. Uh, people are now putting it on small devices like mobile phones and stuff. Maybe you can enter a, a contract with a mobile company. It's, it's a wild, wild west out there. So it's, it's more like we need to think more with DVD sales and think more of maybe DVD sales. Maybe DVDs should be free as a 
promotional material. Maybe it's a sample. I don't know. I don't know how. What's the future like? But you will see a lot of crazy <coughs> things going on, and maybe DVDs are not the way to go anymore. A lot of young people just going in and say, "I want to make a script. I want to make a movie," and they're like 18 and they haven't lived life. So if they they make a film. They're not going to have a universal perspective. So I think the first thing is live life before you can make a film. You know, get married, get divorced, maybe don't get divorced. I don't know. <laughs> have something, have something to say. So because you you you're going to make a film about a 40 year old general, and you're 18. You don't even know how he even sounds like. So for you to write that perspective. So I think I see many people who just want to be stars. They see something on YouTube. It's like, oh, I can be that. And there's a lot of misinformation in the media that oh somebody just came out of nowhere. But in reality, like for me, I, I first acted when I was three, in in a play, and then I worked as a, I worked on 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 TV in TV as a TV presenter. Then I worked as a DJ. Then I worked. Then as I just learned filmmaking for like eight years, doing stuff for other people without making my own films. So that was sort of an inter internship, sort of. But I didn't get paid. I was just kept helping people. If somebody has a shooting something, I'll carry their lights just so I can learn something. So I think you just need to invest into learning and living life first before they think about making it, becoming the Quentin Tarantino. I think Google. nowadays you don't even need to go to film school. There's a lot of videos, there's Google, let's just use internet for something other than you know, watching, uh, I don't know, playing games, playing games or whatever. You can Google anything right now and then just study, just watch interviews. The, the YouTube has a lot of, so nowadays you don't even need really film school, but you just need to understand that that you need to add knowledge and add experience in your life to make a film and not just... And also it's a collaborative effort. I see a lot of people saying, I'll do everything, I'll do this and I'll do that. But it's, it's like a engineering, you know, you're not going to build tiles and put electricity. You need partners, so you need to live well with people so people can help you when it comes time to your project.